Uh, when the to resist what? To resist this authoritarian government. Because when things become more authoritarian, people go to fear and ignorance. <laughs> At 7 a.m. this morning, January the 25th, 2013, we discovered that our video had been censored by Castanet. Erroneously citing copyright law, Castanet has illegally had our video about local police brutality removed. This move is in direct violation of Canadian freedom of speech laws as protected under Section 2 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's also in violation of international fair usage copyright law. We are starting our $15,000 legal fund this morning and sending out major materials to support this action. However, the law courts of Canada are too slow to deal with crimes like these. So we are prepared to start direct action immediately. Starting with a campaign to actively promote any business in direct competition with the advertisers on Castanet, while silently encouraging a boycott of those businesses that are maintaining an advertising presence on Castanet, we are going to keep action up until Castanet itself restores police brutality Kelowna, Jeff Mantler, and CHBC News. Advertisers have been contacted as of 7.30 a.m. this morning about the fact they are being singled out and we are encouraging those advertisers to use the multitude of other advertising options in the Okanagan Valley. And this action will be ramped up as the months proceed. We will be having live showings of the censored video in locations throughout BC as this spring develops. But right now, we're encouraging Castanet Management to contact us as soon as possible. They have to get that movie reinstalled on YouTube. However, the precarious position that Castanet has put us in by illegally stopping our broadcast has damaged this company and our ability to provide independent news. We have extensive legal advice concerning news broadcast and as an accredited reporter, I, Darren Howard, have never seen a more offensive violation in the application of broadcast law. We have updates to come to stay tuned. Please stay tuned. But... Remember, the $15,000, that's right, $15,000 Freedom of Speech campaign starts now. Hi, this is Robert Nisbet, and today on this show, we're going to be focusing on how the media is dropping the ball, and here's a clip to start things up. Now, uh, when you turn on the news, you expect to see commercials, right? After every couple segments, you get a few commercials. And right before the show comes back, maybe you'll see uh, the network has some promotions for its other offerings. But savvy viewers are noticing that in many cases, mainstream channels more and more are merging the two together, using news as an opportunity to promote entertainment shows and vice versa. The Los Angeles Times says, quote, the idea of media companies making use of their platforms to advertise their own assets and personalities is nothing new. ABC's Good Morning America has no qualms about using its valuable time to talk about dancing with the stars. But NBC is becoming the most aggressive in doing this. And if it continues, it could harm the credibility of its news division. To discuss this, I'm joined now by Danny Schechter, journalist and filmmaker in our New York studios. Hey there, Danny. All right, it's not that this is unique to NBC, but it is becoming more and more common. What do you think is behind this? You know, the distinction between uh, fiction and faction, between reality uh, and, you know, attempts to emulate reality are continuing so, to such a degree that you can't tell what's real and what isn't real. And of course, uh, hoping to profit from all of this and benefit from all of this are the entertainment companies. Danny, talk about uh, the impact here, the effect that this is having on us as a yeah, society. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it is working. They're actually losing viewers and losing audience. They trivialize uh, news and information, uh, and they uh, don't inform the American people very well about what's really happening. So Jay Leno himself used to do this bit on, on his show where he went out you know, into the into the uh, uh, public, and he held up two pictures. Here's President Carter. Here's Mr. Peanut. Who do you recognize? Some people recognize Mr. Peanut, but not President Carter. This is a, a, a deliberate effort to dumb down the American people. The news networks are are part of it, and they have been for years. 
Well, uh, it certainly is an interesting topic, one that we wanted to, you know, bring to light and just sort of put out there and talk about. Always good to have you on the show, uh, Danny Schechter. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, that's how we start things off. We're going to start talking about censorship, and we've got a great show lined up for you. I am Darren Howard. And I am Robert Nismith. We woke up this morning amazed to find out that Castanet censored our video about police brutality. It's obvious that we're starting to have an effect. What I want to know is who do they think they are. And why on earth would they censor a video using their video? Well, I have an idea, because they have to and fall in line with their corporate masters. Yes, that's right. Castanet stopped reporting the news some time ago, and we've been waiting for them to show their true colors. But by removing the video, they're simply giving us the opportunity to show it out in public. That's right. Not only is Castanet doing this sort of thing, but uh, the National Post media is attacking Press TV for telling the truth about the Idle No More movement as well. Is that right? That's Are right. They? Okay, we've got clips coming up. The clip that you just saw talked about the fact that major media is starting to lose it. Okay? It's just infotainment now. Yeah, okay. We haven't come up with major journalism probably for about a decade now. They stopped doing research or background on stories. It's just pure laziness on their part. And we see that they keep the debate limited to a very small scope. Remember, you didn't have poverty issues described to you while covering the Idle No More movement. No, you didn't. And, of course, we covered poverty issues. We've got a municipal sustainability program coming up, but our $15,000 campaign for freedom of speech in the Okanagan to defeat these corporate guys at Castanet, that's what we've got to get going this morning. Yes, and that'll be a really interesting time that's lying ahead of us. I know. I can't wait to hit the streets. We've got so much happening in the city today. I mean, like this weekend, the whole city's on fire with activism. What a great time to start a campaign. Yeah, today at 2 o'clock, we're going to be at the Dayton Street Overpass to uh, talk about uh, Sensible BC and its support of Idle No More. Yes, and we're also going to start our Castanet censorship campaign when we hit that bridge. It should be an interesting morning. Uh, this evening over at Okanagan College, there's a uh, Amnesty International Film Fest uh, feature called Blood in the Mobile about uh, um, uh, Coltan in the mobile phones, which is a rare earth material that is farmed in Africa, which causes great suffering to the people over there. Rare Earth Materials is one of those stories that we've run right here. And that's at 7 o'clock down at the college, OUC? No, that's at Kelowna Community College. Oh, the uh, Kelowna. Over on, over on KLO there. I get you. Make sure that you get informed. Make sure we get those links up there tomorrow. There's action. Sunday, there's action. Is that right? That's right. Tomorrow, there's a People's Summit on the Enbridge Pipeline over at the United Church. That starts at 7 p.m. Guest speakers are Elizabeth May, Chief Phillips from the, uh, from the Nation, the NDP energy critic, and Damien Gills, a uh, uh, documentary filmmaker from Vancouver. And that's a really big show that's coming up. Uh, make sure you get informed, though, because news is not carrying the story. Okay, we've seen CHBC News not carry the story. We've seen Castanet stop carrying the story. I mean, great on car accidents, though. Oh, yeah, but not talking about oil spills or what's really going on in the energy sector of our province. So let's get informed and remember to question all of the things that we are presenting here because we're not going to take out commercials saying, trust us, we want you to use your brain. What do you got for me, brother? I got Mr. Blatney talking about his attack on, on, on by the Canadian press on his attitudes. Okay, so let's run the clip. You make up your mind. Uh, Joshua Blakeney, uh, uh, Kenneth Fernandez talks about how the media has uh, painted this as being uh, these lazy uh, natives uh, or aboriginals. Why has the media portrayed it this way? I mean, uh, uh, you being a, uh, obviously a correspondent, I'm sure have been following this. Uh, are we seeing now uh, more of an education coming through from the media? Uh, I know that Press TV, uh, as you have, uh, has uh, reported on this quite extensively. Uh, are we seeing uh, more of a, a better light uh, and more educational in terms of what is going on with the plight of the aboriginals? Yes. Yes, I, 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 had, I was written to by a, a journalist at Canada's National Post yesterday, and he was asking me why Press TV covers Aboriginal matters. And I had to remind him that in global cities around the world, you have people protesting effectively Canada's government. Canada that was once loved in the world is now being protested in Tokyo, Sydney, London, New York, and of course ubiquitously throughout this country of Canada. Now the media, because it's owned by rich people, obviously uh, the ownership of the media necessitates them 
demonizing and ostracizing uh, the indigenous peoples of this country and sowing divisiveness. They're trying, just as in the Middle East, they have good Muslim, bad Muslim, good Arab, bad Arab, good Palestinian, bad Palestinian. Just, just so in, in this country, the media are portraying you know, good Aboriginals, bad Aboriginals. For example, uh, Chief uh, Terence uh, uh, Nelson, who appeared on Press TV recently, he's a bad Indian you know, in, the con in the Canadian media because he takes civil resistance to a level that other, uh, perhaps more comprador-like uh, leaders right, of the Unfortunately, we're fresh out of time. I do apologize. Do. Another Thank you very reason, much. like I suggested uh, in my we're, we're just out of time. That's press TV correspondent Joshua Blake. Uh, Joshua Blake. Yeah. So sorry that he got caught off there, but you know it happens. Okay, he's really trying to get the word out that they're not. They've limited the debate on major news about I don't know more, saying that they're confusing, but they're not talking about poverty, which is what I don't know more is talking about. That's right, and of course, uh, Press TV was talk started talking about uh, Canadian Aboriginal issues long before that Canada closed their embassy in Tehran. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but national, the National Post is citing that as when they started really paying attention to issues in Canada. Okay, but, uh, uh, we do got we got another clip. Uh, clip I want to run here real quick. But if you're new to the show, we do talk about the fact that major media is infotainment. And we've got a lot of background to back this up. The fact that people are not informed about the monetary system, fractional reserve lending. You're not informed that there are cures for cancer that are cheap and easily accessible. And you'd think that'd be top line news. You would think, you know, but, uh, but okay. <laughs> these things are not. And uh, we've also got something else here that blows me away. Yes, apparently I don't know more. It had some issues with the way that the Sun News Network has been covering them. Tell they went down really? and had a little chat with uh, one of their big guys. Let's run the clip. You make up your mind. I care about who you work for. What I care about is how my people go to bed at night. But on the, do you think about that? Do you think about that? Do you think about that? Every day by, by going into the media and to the press and to sending out messages to people, to general people, knowing in your heart, looking in your eyes, knowing in your heart that you are sending a racist agenda against people, against what, what Yo, do you care about not all Israelis is are like, like you. I'm Jewish right? myself and that's I come right. from Holocaust that's surviving right. families and that's the reason why I'm supporting yeah. Idle No More yeah. and these people's right to risk. We are going to get together this and you know get that on a major clip for you. OK, yeah. we want you to do your research on how racist things are in major news. And they they actually got a memo saying that they were not to do a positive story on Aboriginal treaty negotiations yeah, from black out, news. That went out to all media outlets in Canada. That, uh, for all black media outlets were right. informed. Do not cover it. I want to run this clip real quick and uh, we'll be right back. So uh, get informed and let's run this. Thanks for joining us here on Sun News Live. The Idle No More protests continue to sweep across the country. Ezra, we've got a protest that seems to be going all over the place. Are they pulling themselves away from their own issues? I knew some of the folks there from before. I had seen them at anti-oil sands protests. I, I recognized some of them from the Occupy Toronto protests. So to call these folks outside Aboriginal activists, it's not really accurate. These are just your rent a mob that will show up at any protest. I mean, they probably have another protest scheduled for next week. Many of them are paid union organizers. So the first thing to remember is that many of them are not Aboriginal and they're sort of folks who just don't like conservatives or don't like my point of view. I question whether police are following instructions and oh, instructions come from on high. Oh, of and that's are. where I wonder about the politics in this. And yeah. we've seen politics being played at a level that they shouldn't be. We, we believe in civilian oversight of cops. Yeah. We don't believe in politicians micromanaging, but they got to give direction. I, I wasn't pleased with how the cops handled outside. Folks, there it is, straight from the man himself, Ezra Levant, host of The Source, live here in our Toronto studios. We'll be back with more after this. And you know, we're going to stay on top of the story just for you, because our job at Radio Free Canada is to keep you informed. That's one thing the mainstream media is not doing. The number one mouthpiece for the conservative government, Ezra Levant, being posed as a journalist while not describing the elements of journalism. I like the fact that he said he's a law and order guy, too. I know. But he's, <laughs> now he's disappointed with the cops. Well, he might want to step over to our side, then. We've got a major report from Idle No More coming up. This is Darren Howard. This is Robert Nisbet. This is Radio Free Canada. We are starting off our campaign, our campaign. Castanet, you should be paying attention. Chances are our video hasn't been restored. We're going to be right back after these. <laughs> 